Then the Ziphites came to Saul at Gibeah, saying, Is not David hiding himself on the hill of Hekelah, which is on the east of Jeshimon? So Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, with three thousand chosen men of Israel, to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul encamped on the hill of Hekelah, which is beside the road on the east of Jeshimon. But David remained in the wilderness. And when he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness, David sent out spies, and learned of a certainty that Saul had come. Then David rose and came to the place where Saul had encamped. And David saw the place where Saul lay, with Abner the son of Ner, the commander of his army. Saul was lying within the encampment, while the army was encamped around him. Then David said to Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Joab's brother Abishai the son of Zeruiah, Who will go down with me into the camp to Saul? And Abishai said, I will go down with you. So David and Abishai went to the army by night, and there lay Saul sleeping within the encampment, and his spear stuck in the ground at his head. And Abner and the army lay around him. Then said Abishai to David, God has given your enemy into your hand this day. Now therefore let me pin him to the earth with one stroke of the spear, and I will not strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, do not destroy him, for who can put forth his hand against the Lord's anointed, and be guiltless? And David said, As the Lord lives, the Lord will strike him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall go down into battle and perish. The Lord forbid that I should put forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. But take now the spear that is at his head, and the jar of water, and let us go. So David took the spear and the jar of water from Saul's head, and they went away. No man saw it or knew it, nor did any awake, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from the Lord had fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side, and stood afar off, on the top of the mountain, with a great space between them. And David called to the army, and to Abner the son of Ner, saying, Will you not answer, Abner? Then Abner answered, Who are you that calls to the king? And David said to Abner, Are you not a man? Who is like you in Israel? Why then have you not kept watch over your lord the king? For one of the people came in to destroy the king, your lord. This thing that you have done is not good. As the lord lives, you deserve to die, because you have not kept watch over your lord, the lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is, and the jar of water that was at his head. Saul recognized David's voice, and said, Is this your voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my lord, O king. And he said, Why does my lord pursue after his servant? For what have I done? What guilt is on my hands? Now therefore, let my lord the king hear the words of his servant. If it is the lord who has stirred you up against me, may he accept an offering. But if it is men, may they be cursed before the lord, for they have driven me out this day, that I should have no share in the heritage of the lord, saying, Go, serve other gods. Now therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth away from the presence of the Lord, for the king of Israel has come out to seek my life, like one who hunts a partridge in the mountains. Then Saul said, I have done wrong, return my son David, for I will no more do you harm, because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. And David made answer, Here is your spear, O king, let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord gave you into my hand today, and I would not put forth my hand against the Lord's anointed. Behold, as your life was precious this day in my sight, so may my life be precious in the sight of the Lord, and may he deliver me out of all tribulation. Then Saul said to David, Blessed be you, my son David. You will do many things, and will succeed in them. So David went his way, and Saul returned to his place. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There was nothing better for me than that I should escape to the land of the Philistines. Then Saul will despair of seeking me any longer within the borders of Israel, and I shall escape out of his hand. So David arose and went over, he and the six hundred men who were with him, to Achish, the son of Maok, king of Gath. And David dwelt with Achish at Gath, he and his men, every man with his household, and David with his two wives, Ahioam and Jerizel, and Abigail of Carmel. 
Nabal's widow. And when it was told Saul that David had fled to Gath, he sought for him no more. Then David said to Achish, If I have found favor in your eyes, let a place be given me in one of the country towns, that I may dwell there. For why should your servant dwell in the royal city with you? So that day Achish gave him Ziklag. Therefore Ziklag has belonged to the kings of Judah to this day. And the number of the days that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a year and four months. Now David and his men went up and made raids upon the Geshurites, the Gerzites, and the Amalekites. For these were the inhabitants of the land from of old, as far as Shur, to the land of Egypt. And David struck the land and left neither man nor woman alive, but took away the sheep, the oxen, the donkeys, the camels, and the garments, and came back to Achish. When Achish asked, Against whom have you made a raid today? David would say, Against the Negeb of Judah, or against the Negeb of the Jeremelites, or against the Negeb of the Kenites. And David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to Gath, thinking, Lest they should tell about us and say, So David has done. Such was his custom all the while he dwelt in the country of the Philistines. And Achish trusted David, thinking, he has made himself utterly abhorred by his people Israel, therefore he shall be my servant always. In those days the Philistines gathered their forces for war, to fight against Israel. And Achish said to David, Understand that you and your men are to go out with me in the army. David said to Achish, Very well, you shall know what your servant can do. And Achish said to David, Very well, I will make you my bodyguard for life. Now Samuel had died. And all Israel had mourned for him, and buried him in Ramah, his own city. And Saul had put the mediums and the wizards out of the land. The Philistines assembled, and came and encamped at Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel, and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams, or by Urim, or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek out for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other garments and went, he and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, Divine for me by a spirit, and bring up for me whomever I shall name to you. The woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the wizards from the land. Why then are you laying a snare for my life to bring about my death? But Saul swore to her by the Lord, As the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? He said, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Have no fear. What do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a God coming up out of the earth. He said to her, What is his appearance? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is wrapped in a robe. And Saul knew that it was Samuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. Then Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul answered, I am in great distress, for the Philistines are warring against me, and God has turned away from me and answers me no more, either by prophets or by dreams. Therefore I have summoned you to tell me what I shall do. And Samuel said, Why then do you ask me, since the Lord has turned from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done to you as he spoke by me, for the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, David. Because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, and did not carry out his fierce wrath against Amalek. Therefore the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will give Israel also with you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons shall be with me. The Lord will give the army of Israel also into the hand of the Philistines. Then Saul fell at once full length upon the ground, filled with fear because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten nothing all day and all night. And the woman came to Saul, and when she saw that he was terrified, she said to him, Behold, your handmaid has listened to you. I have taken my life in my hand and have listened to what you have said to me. 
Now therefore, you also listen to your handmaid. Let me set a morsel of bread before you and, and eat, that you may have strength when you go on your way. He refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, urged him, and he listened to their words. So he arose from the earth and sat upon the bed. Now the woman had a fatted calf in the house, and she quickly killed it, and she took flour and kneaded it and baked unleavened bread of it. And she put it before Saul and his servants, and they ate. Then they rose and went away that night. When men in the camp were jealous of Moses and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord, the earth opened and swallowed up Dathan, and covered the company of Abraham. Fire also broke out in their company, the flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf in Horeb, and worshipped a molten image. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that eats grass. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and awesome things by the Red Sea. Therefore he said he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him, to turn away his wrath from destroying them. Then they despised the pleasant land, having no faith in his promise. They murmured in their tents, and did not obey the voice of the Lord. Therefore he raised his hand and swore to them that he would make them fall in the wilderness, and would disperse their descendants among the nations, scattering them over the lands. Then they attached themselves to the ball of Peor, and ate sacrifices offered to the dead. They provoked the Lord to anger with their doings, and a plague broke out among them. Then Phineas stood up and interposed, and the plague was stayed, and that had been reckoned to him as righteousness from generation to generation forever. Pilate then called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him, neither did Herod, for he sent him back to us. Behold, nothing deserving death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. But they all cried out together, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas, a man who had been thrown into prison for an insurrection started in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them once more, desiring to release Jesus, but they shouted out, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no crime deserving death. I will therefore chastise him and release him. But they were urgent, demanding with loud cries that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that their demand should be granted. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, whom they asked for, but Jesus he delivered up to their will. Sadly, people are not always truthful. They lie. Lying breaks down the fundamental bonds of trust that, you, that unite us. Lying is opposed to truth, and it is an offense against justice, since we owe others the truth. Saul lies in order to deceive David when he responds to David's protestations of innocence with an apparent confession. I have done wrong. Return, my son David, for I will no more do you harm. Saul has proven himself false repeatedly, and as a result his promises of peaceful welcome cannot be trusted. Indeed, we find Saul giving David's wife to another man. In the trial of Jesus, Pilate pronounces the verdict three times, not guilty. Jesus is innocent, and Pilate knows this to be true. Yet the Roman governor does not have the will to back up his truthful words with right action in the face of Jesus' accusers. Despite the not guilty verdict, Pilate sentences Jesus to death. The punishment does not fit the crime, nor even the judge, the judge's own verdict. Proverbs reminds us, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. What can you do to grow in the virtue of honesty in word and deed?